So, I went hiking deep into the woods, trying to reach my private cabin. The path was narrow and surrounded by tall trees, and there were no other cabins around. I thought I would have a peaceful time alone, but things took a scary turn. As I walked, I heard the usual sounds of nature, leaves rustling and birds chirping. But suddenly, everything went quiet. In the woods, silence means something is wrong. I stopped and listened carefully for any signs of danger. Then I heard footsteps. They were coming from the right side of the woods. My heart raced, and I felt a chilling sensation. I couldn't see anyone yet, but the sounds kept getting closer. The feeling of fear grew inside me. After about 30 seconds, a man appeared from the woods. He looked like he was in his 40s and had messy hair. He was smiling in a creepy way, and his eyes looked wild and crazy. I couldn't look away from his gaze. I stood frozen, unable to move. Luckily, the man wasn't coming towards me. He seemed to be crossing from one side of the woods to the other. But what scared me the most was that he never stopped staring at me. As he went into the trees on the other side, he stopped staring at me and started looking forward. The woods remained quiet for a while. I stood there, unsure of what to do next. But gradually, the sounds of nature returned. The birds started chirping again and the leaves rustled. It was as if the forest had accepted the man's departure and went back to normal. Even though I was scared, I decided to keep going. I didn't want this encounter to stop me from reaching my cabin. Finally, after hiking for about one hour, I arrived at my cabin. I was relieved to see it and quickly went inside, locking the door. I checked around, making sure I was alone. Thankfully, nothing else happened that night. I spent the hours quietly, finding comfort in the safety of my cabin. I wondered who he was and what he wanted. Luckily, I didn't see him again during my time in the woods. Sometimes I think, maybe he was just lost or troubled. I was so excited when my friends and I went on a weekend trip to a cozy cabin in the middle of nature. We rented it for just one night and couldn't wait to get away from the city and enjoy the peacefulness of the wilderness. When we arrived at the cabin, we were immediately taken by its old-fashioned charm. It was surrounded by trees and had a calm feeling that made us feel relaxed. The sun made everything look beautiful with its warm golden light. After we settled in, we decided to explore the nearby woods. The thick green trees looked inviting, and we eagerly went on a hike, enjoying the fresh air. We had so much fun and made unforgettable memories in the stunning nature. As it started getting dark, we went back to the cabin feeling really happy. We ate a delicious meal together and laughed a lot, just enjoying the simple moment. The atmosphere was joyful. But at around 9 p.m., we started feeling really tired. We went to the bedroom to sleep when suddenly we heard a strange noise. It sounded like footsteps. They were quiet at first, but then they got louder. We looked at each other nervously, our hearts beating fast. We tried to convince ourselves that it was probably just a small animal wandering around. We didn't want to think that something bad might be happening. Whatever it was, it came near our front door, stood there for about two minutes, and then went back into the woods. We were relieved and went back to sleep. When morning came, we cautiously went outside to see if we could find any footprints from last night. When we opened the front door, we saw human footprints near our front door. We felt true fear in our hearts, realizing that we were not alone in the remote wilderness. We then saw a dead dog lying on the ground, on the right side of our front door. Its body looked twisted, and it seemed like something terrible had happened to it. The sight was so scary. One of my friends couldn't handle and started throwing up. We were filled with fear, trying to understand what had happened during the night. With shaking hands, we quickly gathered our things and quickly left the cabin, and wasted no time in telling Airbnb about what had happened in their rental. It was a typical Friday night, and my friends Jacob, James, and I wanted to relax after a long week. We got together at James' house, opened some beers, and shared stories about what we've been up to. As the night went on, James suggested that we go into the nearby woods, 
and enjoy our drinks by the pretty river that was close by. It was already really late, but we were drawn to the peaceful outdoors, so we agreed. We went inside the forest, and walked for about twenty minutes, using the moonlight to guide us through the thick forest. The air was cool, and we could hear the sound of the flowing river in the distance. Suddenly, out of the darkness, we saw an old, abandoned cabin. It had a spooky charm that made us want to explore it even more. Being curious, we went into the cabin carefully, our footsteps were making loud sounds in the empty rooms. After exploring the ground floor, we went upstairs, the stairs were creaking under our weight. There was only one room upstairs, as we entered the room on upper floor, we heard footsteps coming from downstairs. A voice called out, scaring us to our core. I know you're up there. The voice echoed through the cabin. Panic filled us as we looked at one another, scared and not sure what to do. We quickly decided to hide in the closet of the room, hoping that we wouldn't be found. We squeezed ourselves into the tight space. The footsteps got louder, and we could tell the person was getting closer. We held our breath, hoping we wouldn't be discovered. The door opened with a creak, and the man's heavy footsteps filled the room. He began searching the room. Time felt like it was standing still as we waited, our hearts beating wildly. The man approached the closet, reaching for the doorknob. Panic surged through us, but before he could open it, Jacob mustered his courage and pushed the closet door as hard as he could. The man stumbled back and fell to the floor. We took advantage of the moment and burst out of the closet, running out of the room as fast as we could. As we were running downstairs, Jacob shouted that the man had a gun. Fear rushed through us as we ran towards the exit, our legs screaming from the strain. The man didn't follow us or anything, but we kept running until we reached James' house, gasping for breath as we closed the door behind us. My family and I settled in for our week-long getaway. It was a much-needed break from the city life, and we loved the peacefulness of our surroundings. The cabin was exactly what we were hoping for, a cozy place in the middle of nature. The first two nights went by quickly, filled with laughter, board games, and stories by the crackling fire. My brother and I explored the vast wilderness around the cabin, creating unforgettable memories along the way. We felt safe and happy. Fast forward, the third night. I couldn't sleep. I felt restless and wanted to find some peace. So, I decided to go outside and enjoy the cool night air. I decided to go sit by the pond, where it was peaceful and the moonlight made everything look beautiful. With a pack of cigarettes, I walked towards the pond. I sat on a worn-out bench. While smoking and lost in my thoughts, I suddenly heard a strange noise coming from across the pond. I strained my eyes to see what was causing it. That's when I saw him, a man standing on the other side of the water. My heart skipped a beat as I watched him. It was hard to see his face from far away, but one thing was clear he was staring at me. I felt a strange and uncomfortable feeling in my stomach. I looked at his hands and noticed he was holding a shovel tightly. The sudden realization hit me like a brick, this wasn't just a random person passing by. As I was trying to make sense of what was going on, the man suddenly started running towards my side of the pond. Fear took over, and without thinking, I jumped up and ran towards the safety of our cabin. Panic fueled every step, with adrenaline rushing through my body. I reached the cabin, slammed the door shut, and made sure every lock was secured. Through the window, I watched as the man turned around and walked away. The rest of our trip went by without any incidents. But as I think back on that night, I feel like I had witnessed the man burying a body. My sister and I were hiking in the thick woods. We felt excited but also a little scared. The trail we were on went through tall trees and lots of plants. After walking for about an hour, we saw something unexpected, a very old and rundown cabin hidden in the trees. It looked like it had been empty for a long time. We were curious and wanted to explore, so we went inside it. It was very quiet inside the cabin, just the sound of our footsteps. But all of a sudden, we heard footsteps from outside the cabin. Our hearts raced, and we looked at each other with worry. 
We were scared and thought about leaving. But before we could go, something unexpected happened. When we reached for the front door, it opened with a loud, creaking noise. A man was standing right there, looking really messy and his eyes looked wild and red. We got terrified and I quickly hit him in the face. Run! I shouted to my sister, and we ran away as fast as we could. We looked back, expecting the crazy man to chase us, but he stayed where he was, his nose was bleeding, and he seemed surprised about what happened. After running for about five minutes, we decided to hike back home. When we reached to our home, we felt relieved and so much safe. In the following days, we couldn't stop thinking why that man was there. Why was he living in that old cabin? We may never know the answers to these questions, but one thing was clear, we narrowly escaped a very dangerous situation. One day, my friend and I went into the forest near our town. We were very excited, it was a perfect day for a walk. We walked deeper into the woods and found an old, abandoned cabin. It looked like nobody had been there for a long time. We couldn't resist our curiosity and decided to explore it. We went inside, not knowing what we would find. As we stepped through the creaky door, we felt uneasy. The cabin felt strange. As we went further into the cabin, my friend saw something alarming, a trail of blood on the stairs. We wondered why there was blood here and what horrible thing had happened in this abandoned place. Despite feeling scared, I decided to go upstairs and see if I could find any answers. But just as I was starting to climb, my friend urgently said, Stop, it's a trap. Don't move. I froze and listened to my friend's warning. Slowly, I went back down the stairs, feeling relieved. My friend had saved me from something dangerous. We quickly left the cabin, and then my friend told me that it was a booby trap and if I were to step on third or fourth stair, it would have triggered the trap. Feeling the weight of the unsettling experience, it was clear that exploring this abandoned place had been a big mistake. When we got home, we called 911 and told them what happened. They came quickly and made sure we were safe. They promised to investigate the cabin and told us to never go to places like that again. From that day on, my friend and I stayed away from abandoned cabins or any other abandoned places. As the sun started to go down, shining a beautiful light through the forest, my friends and I got to the cabin we rented for a night of relaxing and having fun. We were really excited as we took out our bags filled with snacks and food. We planned to stay up all night, enjoying each other's company and the peacefulness of the woods. The cabin looked comfy, with one floor and big glass windows with curtains. It seemed like the perfect getaway, a break from our busy lives. As it got darker outside, we settled inside the cabin and lit a fire in the fireplace to stay warm. We could hear laughter all around as we enjoyed our snacks and had a great time together. It felt calm and relaxing, but we had no idea that something scary was lurking just outside the safety of the cabin. Around 1 a.m., we started feeling uneasy as we heard faint footsteps outside the cabin. It made us really scared, and we looked at each other with worry. Something was definitely wrong. One of my friends, Tyler, who was the bravest, decided to look through the curtain to see who or what was outside. As he pulled the curtain on the side, we all saw something horrifying. There was a man with a crazy look in his eyes, pushing himself against the window. It seemed like he was desperate to get inside, and he was staring straight at us. That sight scared all of us. We panicked and rushed to find our phones so we could call the police for help. We called the police and told them about our situation. The seconds felt like forever as we waited anxiously for help to come. Meanwhile, the man outside kept pressing himself against the window. Tyler, in a brave move, shouted at him through the glass, telling him that the police were on their way. The man's eyes got bigger, and his face showed a mix of fear and anger. Without saying anything, he ran off into the woods, disappearing into the darkness he came from. Finally, we heard sirens getting closer. We felt so relieved as the police arrived. Their presence made us feel safe again. They told us that the man might have been homeless and stumbled upon the cabin, looking for a place to stay. While that explanation made us feel a bit better, 
We couldn't easily forget the fear he had put in us. To make sure we were safe, the police decided to drive us out of the woods, leaving our car in front of their patrol car.